Jesus tells us that the poor are always with us. But in 19th century London, they were with us in a really big way. Brighton may have had its problems with the poverty, but it was nothing compared to London. Although the railways had allowed many people to escape to more civilised suburbs, many Londoners remained crowded into the capital's dreadful slums. The Victorian Christians were deeply conscious of the plight of the poor, which is why most new churches were built in Britain's poorest neighbourhoods. And I've come to Kilburn Park in North London to visit the Church of St Augustine, which is one of the finest. Though this area has changed greatly in the past century, St Augustine still stands as a major monument of the high church ideals of those who first worshipped here a century ago. It's a marvellous example of Victorian design, but its importance for the religious movements of Victorian England makes it truly extraordinary. St Bartholomew's in Brighton was high church Anglican, but what we see here is higher still. This church is Anglo-Catholic, which is almost more Catholic than the Catholics. You can immediately see that it's quite unlike St Bartholomew's. Its roofs are crowded with spires. There are buttresses and porches and great tall windows. It's far more interesting on the outside and more Catholic looking. There's no mistaking that the entrance here is full-on Gothic revival. It's like a Victorian Notre Dame recreated in Kilburn Park. This spectacular interior reminds us even more of a medieval French cathedral. In fact, it was modelled on the great cathedrals of southern France and Italy. It was built by a highly successful Gothic revival architect, John Loughborough Pearson, who was himself a devout high churchman. And the art and architecture of the church is entirely at one with his high church faith. He said that the question to ask oneself on entering a church was not, is it admirable or is it beautiful, but rather, does it send you on your knees? Pearson's Gothic is a wonderful illustration of the Victorian ability to pick and to choose, and so it's quite eclectic in style. His basic ideas were drawn from 13th century English Gothic architecture, but he'd studied in France and was fascinated by what had happened abroad in the Middle Ages. For example, he must have looked at the great southern French cathedral of Albi, where we find similar spatial ideas as we find here at Kilburn vaults over the main vessel, over the nave, and over the aisles, creating these spacious galleries lit by tall, slim, and rather dramatic windows on either side. The church is built from brick. Again, studying abroad, he would have learnt how in France and Germany and in Italy, brick buildings had been very fashionable in the Middle Ages. And because the Victorians liked hard, bright colours, Clayton and Bell, a very well-known team of Victorian decorators, were employed to paint this part of the church. Running around it are the miracles of Christ, with masonry patterning and foliage, the full panoply of Victorian decorative taste. This is truly the Victorian Bible of the illiterate. As well as being beautifully painted, this church has the most extraordinary array of Victorian sculpture, which becomes more intensive as we get towards the Holy of Holies. So behind me is this amazing screen erected in the centre of the church. It's an open work construction 
very, very conspicuous. And along the top of it runs the Passion of Christ, the entry into Jerusalem, his betrayal, his, his being carried off to the crucifixion, which we see finally on the top with other saints. It's all very vivid. It's not a very English way of decorating the centre of a church at all. What Pearson is doing here is copying the very best French Gothic models of the 13th century, so he's concerting ideas from lots of different countries. And that's made very apparent as we go through into the choir of the church proper. And here we walk immediately across the most beautiful inlaid Italianate floor with what looks like serpentine and porphyry and other ornate marbles that go up these very carefully arranged steps, very elevated high altar. So it's uh, fully in the highest traditions of the Tractarian movement. And again, sculpture all around us. Uh, on the side walls, we've got angels and bishops and yet more narratives from the life of Christ running around the whole building a veritable company of heaven around the high altar. We've got beautiful embroidered banners suspended over the high altar of these exotic looking lamps of brass, though they look like gold, with the uh, beautiful lights burning within them, and beyond, finally, the pièce de résistance of the church, the great canopy, the tabernacle of God, there with marvellous candlesticks, and rising above it, beyond, is the crucifixion of Christ with sensing angels and a fine, ornate canopy, a great wall that rises up above it, full of rich, stained glass. This is a most spectacular, series of gestures by Pearson towards the art of Europe, but for the sake of high Anglican devotion. A big part of this devotion was the focus on Catholic ritual. So the high church brought back into use the spectacular vestments used in Catholic ceremonies. St. Augustine still has one of the finest set of vestments from the period, which are used for Requiem Mass, Advent, Pentecost, and Easter. And there's even a bishop's mitre that was the first to be used in London since the Reformation. This small side chapel, currently undergoing restoration, is a classic example of Victorian Gothic at its best. It's almost over the top. Stepping in here is like getting into a Fabergé egg. It's modelled on the most beautiful examples of French Gothic of the 13th century, very courtly, gilded. In fact, it's the chapel of St. Michael and the Blessed Sacrament. The angels here are a very important theme. The whole thing is absolutely scrumptious. This magnificent building would grace Belgravia, but it's here in Kilburn Park. It may look like a cathedral, but it was built as a church for the working class. The parish commissioned a famous architect, the height of his career, to build a magnificent place of worship. But like St Bartholomew's, the church was made free and open to whomever chose to worship here. These high churches were built not for the toffs, but to be used by the poor, to lift the spirits of ordinary people, to give them a glimpse of something great and glorious. The Victorians were greatly concerned with improvement and reform and with the plight of the poor. The Oxford movement tried to transform worship through art and through architecture and to restore to Anglicanism some sense of the ritual that it had lost. It also tried to bring the poor closer to God. It's the last in the series of John Osborne in The Gift of Friendship on Tuesday night at 7.15, which features unique film of Laurence Olivier and Richard Burton. Next on Five, a quick news update, followed by Sherlock Holmes' Dress to Kill.